in your book you you spend a good amount of time you know exploring and discussing mystical experiences these ego dissolving experiences of transcendence of ego in some cases transcendence of of space and time and a sense of of visceral experiential a unitive sense of interconnectedness with a greater reality yeah can you speak a little bit more as to in your eyes in your estimation the metaphysical implications of the mystical experience that's a great question um yeah, so I, I like the language used for it. I think infinite is a, is a useful word, and it's it's a tricky one because when people hear it, I think they think of something. They think of something really big, <laughs> something really expansive and extending in you know maybe in space. Um, and that maybe it might sound implausible to someone who's not had these kinds of experiences. But you know what it really means is not finite, not confined, not bounded, not limited. Um, and I think for me, yeah, the the fundamental flavor of mystical insight is is this embodied realization or beholding of the fact that reality itself is unbounded isn't limited and finite and the the impression of things being limited and finite is a mental kind of boxing in that we do of categories you know to um yeah to give the impression of of conceptual divisions between well that's a cat and that's a dog and there's not all actually just this huge cosmic evolutionary process of everything melding into each other over time you know like we try and the mind tries to structure things the average i think person has this idea that they are a self who inhabits the head or somewhere in the body who is conscious and yeah the self comes first and then they are conscious and uh, this is the self who pulls the levers who makes the decisions who has free will all that kind of stuff um and then with a kind of ego dissolving experience where the lights don't go out where consciousness is still shining it becomes really clear that consciousness is more robust and more primary than your sense of self i'm not talking about the, the body here but i'm talking about yeah the idea of Jonas or James, like the person who we think we are, who owns the body. Um, and then you can see that as a kind of mental construct, something that the organism is, yeah, is an idea that the organism has that it doesn't actually have any objective existence, um, which is now yeah, well supported by our best understanding of the brain and of, um, yeah, most people have worked on this now. Um, so when you, when you see reality as made of a kind of interwoven pattern, where actually it's not made there aren't even separate things that are interacting it's more that it's it's the wholeness of reality interfo interwoven with itself it's like the one is interacting with itself we are like an eye that opens and the universe sees itself through us we're not a truly separate island though we're not a truly separate little thing that um yeah has its own little mind reality it sees through us and so when you have mystical experience your sense of self can be suspended and then you can come to see a formless awareness that feels like it's emanating from or it is you know, it's fully grounded in the unfolding of reality in a very robust way and in that you you behold that there are no conceptual divisions and that actually there's wholeness there's unity and it's yeah and it's beyond concepts so what word do you want do you want to use for something that can't be articulated it's utterly beyond concepts and it's the ground of being and it's everything that exists God is the word people have used for that a lot of the time in, in history, right? So there's utility there to that, to that word. And then divine just means relating to God. So when people like Descartes, who's really at the you know, foundation of modern ways of thinking about this stuff, he wrote that we have, humans have a divine soul. And I think that intuition makes sense psychologically where if one's in touch with the way that formless awareness, the kind of the, the core of consciousness that's deep, that's in which the contents arise, um the way that that is a, an aperture like a window onto the unity of existence the non-conceptual thing that you might call god um again understood here in, in a non-supernatural way uh the it makes sense to say that that formless awareness you might you know you might want to say it's divine right because it's related to god it feels like an emanation of god um and there's also a sense in which it's eternal because you come to see I mentioned before fast and future falling away and there's only ever this eternal infinite moment um so it you come to see yeah that you are part of god you could say as well um and at this point i mean you also come to see that your <laughs> your true nature the ground of, of just beingness which is always present everywhere can't die it's deathless it's like you the body will die but that's not truly your deepest nature 
you know so you come to see that what you are is eternal what you truly are um even though that island of consciousness will blink out i think associated with the body but there's actually no difference between your awareness and my awareness it's it's flavorless it's you know you could hold up different examples of flames but they're all examples of fire there's one phenomenon of consciousness even if it's not a continuous field even if there are islands of it um there's one phenomenon of awareness it's not flavored with it with self it's not flavored with with the experiences that are arising in it. it's a perfectly pristine space um so for all those reasons i think you have a picture here that's scientifically valid in my opinion that um that can completely give you sympathy as to why you might say that we possess well again possessed you wouldn't want to objectify it you'd want to say that in experience as you open to the deepest layers of experience you come across something that you if you were to say it's a divine eternal soul that gives insight into to it's not so much that the soul is eternal but the yeah, to your own undying nature i think that would be a valid um claim uh so yeah, it's, it's, it, there's, I think there's a lot this perspective can do to offer defenses of different aspects of spirituality that one, I mean, I wasn't expecting actually to even touch on that concept. It just came to me as I was bringing together threads at the end of the book. Um, but yeah, thank you for asking. It's, it's an interesting, it was an unexpected little treat to, to add that in. <laughs>